All right, so now that we understand that perfect competitors have a horizontal demand curve, we can now look back at the market structure graph, but we're going to call it the firm structure now because this is an individual firm for a perfect competitor. And we can try and identify their costs and we can also identify their how they um, um, identify the profit maximizing quantity. Obviously, they're not going to decide on the price because they are price takers. So all we're going to identify here is the profit maximizing quantity. Then we're going to identify the average total cost, the um, average variable cost. Then we can identify the average fixed cost. And we can also identify things like the total revenue and the profit, etc. Okay, just like we did previously. All right, so our profit maximizing rule has not changed. We will identify the profit maximizing quantity when, wherever marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. So we are, once again, we are looking for where the marginal revenue curve intersects with the marginal cost curve. Now, what we just learned is that the marginal revenue curve is now the, the same thing as the demand curve, and it is horizontal. And so all we have to do is go along the marginal revenue curve and along the marginal cost curve and find where they intersect. And you can see that right here. You can see where marginal revenue and marginal cost intersect at that point right there. And where they intersect, what we're going to do, just like we did previously, is we're going to go vertically down from there to the axis to identify the quantity. Now, the quantities are going up by 50 at a time. we got 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 3, 350. So our profit maximizing quantity here is going to be 350 units. Now, I didn't leave myself very much space, so you may want to go ahead and write that down somewhere. Let me write over here. Quantity is going to be 350. And now, what the next thing we would do at that point is we would identify the the price that we're going to charge. But we're price takers here, so we're not going to determine the price. The price is currently 100. So we have 350 units that we are going to sell at a price of 100, and that is going to maximize our profit. Okay. Now, at a price of 350, we can now identify the average total cost, which is in green. And it looks to me like average total cost intersects that quantity about halfway. And so it looks to me like average total or average total cost is going to be $95 per unit. So we're going to say average total cost ATC is $95. We already know that the price is $100. And so you know what we're going to do? We're going to go ahead and bring this. We're going to put a dotted line over here. Do you see our, our rectangles forming? Okay, here's price is greater than average total cost. That means that this company is going to earn a profit. And now we can identify the average variable cost. Looks to me like average variable cost intersects 350 right there at, let's see, that looks like price is going up by 10 at a time. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Okay, so we're going to say that that's 80. So average variable cost for this company is going to be $80 per unit. And now we can identify the average fixed cost, right? By doing average total cost, 95, minus average variable cost, 80. And therefore, AFC, average fixed cost, is going to be $15 per unit. And now we could then take that information and we could identify, uh, we could identify the fixed cost for the company. We just have to multiply those numbers by 15. I'm going to grab a calculator here. And so if I do 350 units times average fixed cost, 15, we have this company has fixed costs of 5,250. Uh, now we're going to do average variable cost, 80 times 350. So it has variable costs of 28,000. If we multiply average total cost by quantity, 95 times 350. That gives us 33,250. So this company has 33,250. I'm actually going to write that one down in costs. So total cost is 33,250. Okay. Now remember to identify the company's total revenue, TR. Okay. 
we have to do price times quantity. Price is 100, quantity is 350, that's going to be 35,000. And now if we want to identify the profit for this company, we just do total revenue minus total cost. So 35,000 minus 33,250. This company is earning a profit, which is this rectangle right here. There's our profit right in there. Okay, this is going to be our profit. This is our profit rectangle right here. This shaded area right here, that's our profit. And in this particular case, our profit is 1,750. So this perfect competitor, the best that they can do, given that they are price takers and given their cost structure, the best they can do is earn $1,750 in profit. So now what I want to do is I want to uh, see what happens to a perfect competitor. We already talked about their price changing. Okay, We already understand that if, if so the supply and demand curves move in the overall industry market, that the, that the price curve will either uh, shift up or it'll shift down, depending on what happens to equilibrium price in the overall market. But for this individual perfect competitor, what would happen if their cost structure changed? What if their marginal cost increased or decreased? Now, I want you to understand that marginal cost, average total cost, and average variable cost are all going to shift together. And that's where we're going to go right now. We're going to see what happens when the marginal cost curve shifts. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what happens very basically when there is a change in the cost structure for a perfect competitor, okay? All right, so all I've drawn on here is the demand curve with the marginal revenue curve and the marginal cost curve. Because the first thing we're gonna talk about is what happens to uh, uh, quantity, the profit maximizing quantity, when there's a change in marginal cost, okay? Uh, so here is our profit maximizing quantity where marginal cost intersects marginal revenue and so this is going to be our starting, uh, I'm going to put a PM down here, profit maximizing quantity, okay? And what we're going to first look at is what happens when costs in the, uh, when, when the cost structure uh, decreases, Cro costs get better. What I mean is this, is um, late, wages go down or the, the uh, products, excuse me, the, the materials that they're buying to produce whatever they're producing go down in price. So when we have a decrease in the price of uh, factors of production, so we're gonna say a decrease in factor prices generally means a decrease in production costs, all right? Now remember, a decrease in production costs will lead to an increase in supply in the overall market, okay? But now we're just talking about the firm. So when factor prices go down, production costs go down. Now other things can make production costs go down. For example, an increase in factor productivity, right? We, are, we learned that. So we know that if factor productivity increases or if factor prices go down, we will have an overall decrease in production costs. When the perfect competitor, now when I say perfect competitor, I don't mean that they are perfect as a competitor. I'm saying that they are a competitor in a perfect competition market. When their production costs go down, what's gonna happen is the marginal cost curve is gonna shift down, okay? So that is going to be a decrease in marginal costs, okay? And so what that means is that this curve is going to shift downward, okay? So we're gonna say downward shift of the marginal cost curve. And so now the marginal cost curve, we're gonna put MC prime, okay? And now look what's happening to the profit maximizing quantity now. This is now where marginal cost intersects marginal revenue. And guess what this firm is gonna do? They are going to increase production. Okay, Q prime, QPM prime. The profit maximizing quantity is now going up. When it's cheaper for a firm to produce stuff, they can produce more stuff. And so that's going to result in an increase in quantity produced, a higher 
profit maximizing quantity. So when a perfect competitor experiences uh, either a decrease in factor prices or an increase in factor productivity, it'll lower their production costs, decrease marginal costs for the firm, which brings down the marginal cost curve and increases the profit maximizing quantity. Okay. By the way, it's going to be the exact same thing. That exact same thing will happen even for monopolies, even for monopolistic competition, and even for, um, for oligopoly. But I'll show you that in our next lesson when we talk about monopoly. All right, so now let's talk about what will happen if there is a, an, an opposite, an increase in costs. Well, what causes production costs to increase? Well, production costs increase under two possible circumstances that we learned about. If there's a decrease in factor productivity or, a, or an increase in factor prices. So if wages go up for this uh, firm or if the cost of capital goes up, they're going to have an increase in production costs. An increase in production costs is going to lead to an increase in marginal costs. Okay, an increase in marginal cost is going to be an upward shift of the marginal cost curve. So it's going to go from here, it's going to shift upward to here. So we'll put marginal cost double prime. And as you can see, this wasn't the best place for that arrow. Put that arrow right here, I guess. As you can see now, where marginal cost intersects marginal revenue is to the left of the starting profit maximizing quantity and therefore an increase in marginal cost for a firm will result in a decrease in how much they're going to produce in the profit maximizing quantity that they will produce. So when marginal costs go up, the profit maximizing quantity will go down. That's a really ugly arrow. I'm going to redraw that. We will have a decrease in the profit maximizing quantity. Okay. All right, now there is one more thing that's going to happen or two more things are going to change when there is a change in marginal cost. Remember that average total cost and average variable cost are both directly related to marginal cost. Okay, And so when marginal cost decreases, when it costs less to make the next unit, that means we're going to have a lower average total cost and a lower average variable cost, because average variable cost is directly related to marginal cost. Same thing with an increase in marginal cost. If we have an increase in marginal cost, we will have an increase in average total cost for the firm and an increase in average variable cost for the firm. And so now you might be thinking, doesn't that also mean that you'll have a change in average fixed costs? And the answer to that question is yes, but not, not simply because marginal cost shifted. The reason you're going to have a change in average fixed costs in the firm is because, because quantity is changing. Remember, fixed costs are fixed. They don't change. Okay. Fixed costs are not directly changed by marginal cost. But average fixed cost, because it's divided by quantity, you are going to have a change in for when quantity goes up, average fixed cost will go down. AFC will go down. But down here, when quantity goes down, that means that average fixed costs will go up. Oops, let's put an upward arrow there. And we'll have an increase in average fixed cost. Okay. It's really hard writing sideways there. Okay. So these are all the dynamic changes that can happen in a, uh, for a perfect competitor. And again, it's the same things will happen. And we'll review that with, uh, monopolies, but you can see how as soon as, uh, cost things that affect production costs change, it really changes everything over here. Uh, in the for the perfect competitor. And what we're going to see in the very next segment is we're going to see what's going to happen to the perfect competitor when the price changes or when the cost structure changes. It's going to put the perfect competitor in a place where they, they're either going to profit, break even, operate at a loss, or have to sh temporarily shut down operations.